everybody. Josh, the RV nerd, Officials RV, down here at Coachman today, where I was invited in to give you a first look at a new model they have coming out. It's kind of a rework of a previous one they had. I think it used to be called the 283, now called the 280, nope, 291 TBSS. This is a floor plan that if, if you don't want just those corner bunks in the middle of the living room, but you want good slide out space, you want a private bunk room and private bedroom, that's where this one comes in. Now, usually when you get that, you run into RVs that are like 35, 36 foot long and like 9,000 pounds. That's the other cool thing about this one because Apex has maintained their lightweight construction, like an all six sided aluminum cage skeleton, um, dual Asdell walls, like all those things. This uh, has a 7,600 pound GVW maximum weight. So, <clears throat> pardon me, choking on thin air out here in Cottonwood uh, flurries. <laughs> but you get the point. It gives you all the private space and the big living space you want without all the weight and uh, without being the most expensive trailer on the market to boot, which is kind of nice. Now, uh, they've got things like a, a decent little camp kitchen outside. You got a mini fridge, a little bonus storage drawer, which is just handy as heck. Uh, and of course, the griddle, 200 watts of factory solar. The underbelly is enclosed and forced air heated. We also have a private true queen bedroom up front 60 by 80 true queen with just a walk straight through the middle entryway to it that uh that's one of the major changes they tweaked around the entertainment center uh to, to put the tv directly facing across from the super slide which i think is a better uh way to go overall um <clears throat> the counter space in this is not terrible either the the shower bathroom arrangement is is pretty you know industry standard but overall i think if you're looking for something that's not cutthroat entry level but not gonna make you go broke kind of level but you want to be able to use it for a while that's where this one comes in here i'm going to share good bad ugly and everything in between if you appreciate that hit that subscribe button let's go we're actually starting back from the bunk room today looking forward which i don't normally do i typically start right from the entry door because i think that makes the most sense but um the major changes on this one is what they did with that bedroom privacy wall and the entertainment center. It used to be where you have the open space to get you up to the bedroom, which has sliding privacy doors, by the way, before you have a heart attack. That used to be the entertainment center. And good Lord, your chiropractor, absolute, four out of five uh, chiropractors approved because it kept them in business. It was a 90 degree neck wrecker entertainment center. And now you don't have that problem. What they've done here is they've uh, they've sacrificed some overhead kitchen space to get you a really nice direct facing entertainment overlooking the campsite kitchen windows, which is about the only viewable campsite windows from the seat. Although you can kind of cheat and use some of the bedroom windows on this. You may also notice how this is carpetless um, and ventless flooring. So it is easy cleaning. Now they, uh, it is a, what is historically called a floor flush slide. When manufacturers removed the carpet, it exposed that a lot of them were not truly floor flush. You can see a little bit of a shadow under the edge of that one. It's kind of a catch-22. If a manufacturer uses a longer carpetless flap so you don't see that, the carpetless flap has the tendency to have that ripple bacon effect, and it doesn't look good. It looks like there's a problem with the flooring, even though there's not. If they make it a little short, then it, um, you know, kind of hovers a little bit, like David Blaine pulling a magic trick. Now, I hope you appreciate too. In a lot of my videos, I'll say, you know, when a manufacturer moves the entertainment center straight across from the sofa like this, uh, they you haven't lost storage. They've just moved it. I don't know that that's actually the case in this floor plan because it has all the same other storage cabinetry space it used to. I think you actually did lose a little bit of kitchen cabinet space. Whether it's still enough for you, I guess that's really up to you to decide and uh, your opinion there. So uh, what else does this one offer us? Well, one of the cool things, I've been a, a very outspoken personally that I'm not a big fan of built-in uh, stereo speaker systems in RVs anymore. I think that we've just kind of evolved past that technology-wise. And this right here is a perfect example of that little portable, rechargeable Bluetooth speaker. And this mount, by the way, also is a charger. So if you want to sit here and listen to music, you can. You can also set that in like your front pass-through compartment down low or it won't blow away the neighbors where the charge controller for the solar package also has a USB plug you could use to keep that topped up. There's also a thing here I think is very easily missed right by the door. They made air useful and that's brilliant to me. This has just a little open air shoe garage right there. And when I get back through my kitchen footage, it occurs to me, I don't have a good view of that, but basically you've got all the way under the countertop. They gave you all the storage space they could. Um, 
but some of it would be hard to reach. So they put that extra door on the end there. And it is kind of my opinion, but when they put the TV in that location, the, you don't have that bulky kitchen cabinet in the way, and it sort of makes the whole thing look and feel a little bit bigger and more spacious, which is nice. Now, um, one of the other cool things on this is this can be built with 50 amp service and a, uh, a second air conditioner. The one that I'm sitting in right now is second air prepped. That second air conditioner would be located in the bedroom. I don't believe it connects to the central air ducting. It would be just a second bedroom air. And I respect the fact that they put all breeze through windows on this. Although this floor plan, because the slide out overlaps with the entry door, you can't just, and the bathrooms in the way, you literally can't just flip flop this. So you can't just put the windows on the campsite. It would be nice, but that requires a totally, totally different uh, layout and design, which isn't impossible. It's just not what this one is. So I guess kind of, you know, it is what it is right there. Your bathroom is pretty straightforward. Like you've, if you've been watching RV videos for a while, like even a week, you've seen this bathroom a lot, a lot, you know. The, uh, I, I want to make mention, we are in an early prototype right now. So some final things like the, this will have uh, medicine cabinet doors. They simply have not yet been installed. So their intention is not to have an open face medicine cabinet. And I think the magnet holdbacks are, are really kind of testament to that fact. The RV is six and a half foot tall to the sidewall, uh, which means my head's all the way up in that skylight. I'm a little over six foot tall. I'm, I'm about six one flat foot. Um, plus I'm wearing shoes in this footage just to give you an idea. So I'm probably about six two ish um, functional standing in there. They've maintained a traditional tub and a uh, curtain. And there's some people that think that, eh, you should never have a tub in an RV. And there's some people that think, well, in a bunkhouse, that makes sense. I don't know. What's your take on that? There's definitely, we have different RVs for different folks when it comes to that. This does have a sliding pocket privacy door for this rear room. But what we're looking at here is, I think, what kind of makes this one a little bit special. Um, it, it gives us a second room where on a rainy day, when the kids are driving you nuts, uh, you know, like a pirate with a belt buckle uh, that's a steering wheel dri <laughs> driving you. Ne never mind. Um, you <laughs> you can uh, you can be like kids. Go to your room. Get. I love you, but I'm about to love you to death. You know. You can tell them to kind of go away a little bit. Now the um, the flip up bunk that you're looking at here is 220 pound rated. I believe the other fixed bunks are rated for a little bit more weight than that. Um, and to uh, you know give you a little function look at that here's everything kind of flipped down and this is what i was saying they call it a tb like a triple bunk but it's actually more of a quad bunk because of that l bunk but um oh by the way notice the extra bonus drawers down there those are really handy for the socks and underwear i would estimate um the uh thing up here is when that top bunk was folded down it's at the same level as this bed over here so if you have a tall teenager type, they can lay lengthwise across this thing and be good to go. Sorry, I'm a little bit shiny. It is hot in here, hot in here. And I am one heck of a sweaty Betty. Um, I think unless you like come up with some kind of surface mount TV, I don't know what kind of TV you're really going to put into that, but you do have TV hookups for what it's worth. Um, you also do have a little bit of dresser storage, as you can see over here. It's not massive, but again, you've got a socks and underwear, you know, set of drawers. You've got a little bit of uh, folded clothing dry storage over in this corner. It's not amazing. There's room for maybe like some, uh, like a tote for clothes under that folding sofa, but it can get the job done. I could see that working, you know. Um, oop. Oop, oop. Hold on. I do want to point out that both the upper and lower bunks also have house, or not household, but USB plugs. There is a uh, household plug um, down here in this area as well, just for what it's worth so you know what you're looking at. Um, working our way forward. Those USB plugs have a type C plug on them, by the way. I think, oh, I, I, this is, I think, a major important factor. We're looking at a high to bed sleeper sofa today. Theater seating is absolutely available. That's probably how I would want to outfit one of these myself. But um, let's start cracking open all the storage. Let's, let's take a look at all of our kitchen storage here, beginning with a big stainless farm sink in here. About my only knock in this kitchen is no wastebasket space. But again, they really did focus on... Um, what do I want to say? Giving us uh, all the cabinet shelf space they could because you did lose a little bit of overhead cabinetry with the entertainment center. I like the RV overall. I think I could deal with it. 
But I think that if you were going to spend a long while in this RV, it could be a problem. Now, uh, of course, you got private front, rear sleeping areas. You also have that um, that easy lift vaulted bed storage system there. With uh, like that could be an awesome little dog bed space or something like that. It actually has a little pet pad, but that's also designed where that um, cushion was setting on that right side bench. That's also intended to be. Um, what do I want to say? Like a, a seating area. It's actually reinforced for seating. So if you want to sit down and fold some laundry or something, you could do that. Or I've seen people actually pull in a small uh, table and use this like a little laptop or your daytime office station. Now that front window and windshield, normally in a private bedroom, I'm not super pumped about that. But in this floor plan, it does from the living room make the whole RV look and feel bigger. Now, as you can see, the, um, <laughs> the hanging towers, uh, the wardrobes, they are angled inwards so you get an uh, like an interesting double 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 mint gum look at my face over here that is a 60 by 80 true queen bed by the way and this is like very side sleeper friendly this is probably one of the most side sleeper friendly floor plans i've seen in a very long time you do have some plugs uh beside the bed as well so if you want to charge your phone run some kind of breathing machine you can do all that as well and again if you want, just like this RV, you can get this built 50 amp service. You could add a second air uh, to it. That's what that little vent would be for. And just in case you care, you do have TV hookups over there on the sidewall. Not an awesome location for it, but it's better than zero, potentially. I don't know, potentially. Why did I throw an E and an R in that? I'm I not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm just not sure, guys. And I was really wondering how the road mode was going to play out in this one. And... I think it's actually going to be better than I expected, but I do want to exercise a little bit of caution. This is a rack and pinion slide. Um, could you, it, it, can I recommend you step in it while it's retracted on this type of slide system? No. If you were tiptoe ginger and you went through it, you'd probably be okay. But technically speaking, I can't ever recommend that. I'd have to recommend you do the bow and Luke Duke yeehaw across that thing. So allow me to do a little bit of a butt scoot boogie over here and squeeze over this thing. Nothing like talking about squeezing and cheeking and everything at the same time. Now, because they didn't build this bathroom out too far, even with that big U-Dinette, I think you can still slide through there and you could still use the bunk room in transit. If you wanted to use the bathroom, though, everything gets a little bit trickier because this gets awful tight, especially with that door handle in the way. Now, in theory, if you left the bathroom door all the way open and somehow strapped it back for transit, it'd make it easier to get to the bathroom, but it'd make it harder to get to the bunk room. This is not a perfect travel function RV. It's just one designed to be a little more functional when you get there without having the weight and cost of a second dedicated slide room that also adds length and cost to the RV. Now, my vehicle recommendations on this are going to really depend um, on where you're towing uh, and like how far and how often. If you're going to be Flatland, Michiana, where I live, a late model tow package half ton, you'd probably be okay with a proper weight distribution system. Um, that being said, I still wouldn't do it even on like a heavy windy day, mostly because of the length of the RV, not even so much of the weight, because the weight is, is I, I think, very respectable and reasonable for an RV of this size. But if you want to go up and down mountain towing or something like that, even though this is lighter weight, um, to, to help handle the cross breeze and the wind and just the physical length and size, because a longer trailer will institute, institute, um, <laughs> I, I don't even, I don't even know, institute, I don't know. Uh, a longer trailer will instigate more sway more easily so that's where sometimes if you're going to go through those more aggressive towing zones uh you're you, you wouldn't regret like a three-quarter you know the little griddle station outside is nice i love that little bonus drawer for a small compact mini camp kitchenette that's not terrible of course your gas grow hookup is right down below and uh when you are in a full tandem axle eight wide apex you get things like an enclosed forest heated uh air heated belly uh standard on these i am having a difficult time talking today. I feel like maybe I just had a little miniature stroke and I'm not sure. Anyway, now the roof of this is fully walkable. Um, it doesn't include a factory ladder, but it does have the prep for one of those telescopic ladders. That's become pretty common. Look at the entry door under that big awning though. 
It's not exactly next to the awning arm, so you're not gonna get rain spritzing you in the face when you walk out of there. Little details like that, if you've never camped, are easy, easy to miss. I love the sticker on the window. 200 watts of renewable solar power. I'm glad it's not disposable solar power. <laughs> Speaking of that, our charge controller is located right down in here. On the right-hand side of that charge controller, if I'm not mistaken, by the way, there is a USB plug over there. Um, that cool vaulted bed storage system that we saw, it's really awesome inside, but it does dig into about half of your pass-through compartment, so kind of keep that in mind. Now, your laminated Coachmans do this thing where they tongue-mount the spare tire. Uh, the idea there being to leave the back of the trailer open if people want to add like a bike rack or something, even though the lawyers don't want you to add a bike rack, the designers build it so that you more easily could. Um, weight in the front of the RV, like the spare tire, also tows a little bit better than weight in the back. What do you think of the new graphics package, by the way? It just feels less, like, <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. It feels less try hard. It just feels good to me. And, and hey, it's got a picture of a dog on the front. Who doesn't like a good dog when you're camping? Everybody does. Prepped and ready for um, slide awnings as well. So if that's something you're looking for, for a little extra protection or keeping the sunshine from baking your scalp when you're in there, that's pretty easy. And they are very good at coachman almost in general especially in their laminated divisions about really centralizing the hookups and doing things like um putting the electrical hookups above the water lines and stuff like that uh there's really not an issue there if a manufacturer doesn't it just feels better i think it definitely gives me some peace of mind but i know there's no real major issue with it on the back we have a full hot cold uh outside utility shower the new tankless on demand water heater as well so you can take those nice long showers without leaving a cold shower behind you and if you look down below you see both a bumper and these little brackets sticking down. It's prepped and ready, so basically you can just bolt on a receiver hitch if you are so inclined. So if you don't want to put something on the bumper, but you want to bring a, a, a bike rack or something like that, they give you a way to do that without mucking with your factory warranty. Another interesting note over here on the slide, they do a couple things like they have, um, there's like a, a, feel this in person, you can feel how their, their wiper blades have a little T flange on them with something that sticks out and they have a really rough textured slide wall so that it grabs that wiper seal to make sure it flips all the way in or out because if it doesn't, the RV may not have a leak but it still has a leak if that makes sense. You could still let water in because the seal's not blocking water the way it's supposed to. Um, if you like what you see, and you're kind of curious or serious about it and you want to check pricing, check the links in the video description. Also down there, I'm going to look up some other links to uh, other campers made by other people that have a, a fairly similar layout. Um, some might be more expensive, some might be less expensive. I think you're going to find that this one kind of hits that really sweet spot middle ground right here. Apex seems to be a brand that a lot of people don't go out of their way to check out, but when they have one, they're like, it actually does everything we need it to do pretty nicely, you know? People tend to be pretty happy with them. And if you like what we're doing for you, hit that subscribe button, and we'll catch you on the next one. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.